Well, good morning. Here it is Thursday morning. You guys have been uh, very attentive to uh, giving some intentional work on yourself. You know, your mind is a workshop. And uh, you shouldn't let anything in your workshop be there if it's not going to help you, okay? Uh, you shouldn't have any form of a tool in your workshop that when you turn it on, it runs you around in the workshop. It tries to <laughs> uh, cause uh, hurt to you in the workshop, okay? And your mind is a workshop. It is given the privilege to, to take in the obedience, the direction, uh, instructions, or uh, clarity of God's will, and then to apply that in our life to cause every area of our life to be successful. And anything in that workshop that's not there to aid you should not be left in that workshop, okay? You should... Uh, Throw it in the trash and get the trash away from the house. Don't leave it. Don't leave it no, anywhere near you. Now, in Second Corinthians chapter ten, we were there yesterday, and it says, "Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God." Now, that's the Word of God that you know. The Word of God that you know may not be the Word of God that I know, but the knowledge that you have of God gives you the level of of God voice that you will have. Okay. In other words. The more words you put in you, the more of God's voice you have in you, okay? And you're able to release that God voice out because of the abundance of the Word of God in you. See, God and His Word are one. So when I put God's Word in me, all right, God knowledge in me, okay, then I have this abundance in me to release God's voice. When, when, God, when, when the Word comes out and I'm saying, by Jesus' stripes, I'm healed, well, well that's God's Word that's using my voice. I'm using my voice to now pronounce God's word. So I'm speaking as a voice of God now against any circumstance or whatever. That's why David said on, on the battlefield, you know, uh, the Lord delivered me out of the paw of the bear and the lion, and he's going to deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Well, what was David doing? David was bringing uh, change, events to change, because everybody else was there. They were depressed. Why? Because they looked at themselves in the size of Goliath versus themselves, and so they were depressed within themselves. Remember what we said uh, depression is? It brings a person to always focus on themselves. And so even when they heard Goliath talking, all right, they didn't say anything because they didn't have anything to say against him. <laughs> but David did. David had victory of God inside of him, word of God inside of him. That's why he could say what he said, okay? And so he was voicing God's word on the battlefield. Well, it's the same thing with you and I, all right? When that obedience is inside of us, as it says here, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That means that whatever was there, I have brought the word in of God now, which causes that thing now to submit itself to me, that I am the person who's in charge and not that imagination or not even that, that word that some discussion has been going on within your mind about something, you know, that's foolish. Now, now take this at heart. When you de when you depress and all those struggles are going on within you, and those discussions are going on, as I said, nobody else hears those things. Okay, they don't hear that discussion. They do not see the struggles that are going on with you. They see how you are responding to those struggles. When you're walking around and you're despondent and when you're not, you know, thinking straight and somebody's talking to you and your mind is five miles away somewhere, guess what? Well, they see how you're responding to what's going on inside of you, okay? And so this is what the Word of God is telling us. It says, in having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. Now, how do I revenge disobedience, okay? I do it by taking the Word of God, as Jesus told Satan himself, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So this is how I am to live. And this is how I bring, I bring my obedience to a place where now I can walk in this obedience and have the victory of this obedience. Okay? And so you have to understand, please get this, your present focus determines your present feelings. And we're talking about whether you are in joy or whether you're depressed. My present focus, what am I focusing on? 
okay? It determines my present feelings. So when I'm focusing on the joy of the Lord and I'm focusing on, you know, the abundance of God and, you know, how, how great God is and whatever, those things cause my present feelings to follow a track, okay, that leads me to victory, that leads me to overcoming. Well, if my present if, I, if my present focus is always on how bad I am, how, what bad things are happening to me, what ain't going to never happen, if my present focus is on that kind of stuff, then the emotional track that I'm going to follow is going to lead me to danger every time. It's going to lead me to destruction. You can follow the, the whole uh, life of Saul that we have recorded here. When you go over to the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, when you go there, just look at the, look how Saul lived because he was always focused on himself. He was always depressed. He killed people because he had the power to do it, okay? He, he caused, you know, holy men to die because he had the power to speak a word and cause people, people's lives to be, you know, just, just eradicated. I mean, he was, he was like it. And, and even his own life and even his own family, just look at how he was as he lived being depressed, always thinking on himself, you know, never realizing that all he had to do was repent before God, you know, and it would have changed everything. It would have brought, you know, the obedience of God into his life. It would have straightened out everything, but he didn't do that because he was always thinking about himself. See, he was always focused on himself, okay? So are you going to be a person that's going to care about yourself, or you're going to be a person that's going to spend more time caring about the thoughts that you that you entertain all day long. You say, what? Are you going to think, are you going to be a person that's going to care more about you? Or are you going to be a person that's going to care more about the discussions and the struggles that go on within you every day? Because, see, you can eradicate the discussions and the struggles by using the Word of God, Okay. By casting the thing down, saying, you're not a part of my life. I have a sound mind. I have a, I have a life before me. Look at my kids. Look at my family. Look at my business. Look at my job. Look at my positions and things I do. I'm going to focus on all these things today and how, how much I can put into these things and make these things better. Or you're just going to sit there and focus all day on that discussion that you're no good, that you'll never be anything, or, or, or everything is working against you. You know, are you going to be that type of person that spends more time on that or are you going to spend more time on yourself? See, that's going to be, that's going to be up to you. Uh, I, I will tell you this. The presence of God, I'm going to say this and then we're going to close out for today. The presence of God is the only place where your weaknesses die. Okay? The presence of God is the only place where your weaknesses will die. And, and because depression is a weakness, okay, this is why I'm so trying to urge you to get into the Word of God and give the patience and the practice, the time of that to progressively bring you out of that thing so that you will know how you got delivered, okay? And you will understand the power of deliverance through the Word of God because once this happens, everything else can happen in your life through the Word of God the same way. God's... He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he loves you dearly. So please think about it. The scripture you can read for that is in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28. He says, in the last days, I poured my spirit on all flesh. That's you, all right? That's you. And where the presence of the Lord is, he said this. Old men are going to dream dreams. Young men are going to speak certain things. They're going to see visions. He says, even my handmaids, they're going to prophesy. That means the presence of God is going to be there to cause words to come out that events are going to change. God bless you. We'll see you in the morning, Friday morning, daily bread. We're going to say some things over you in Jesus' name. Amen.